Hello YouTube. So uh, in this video series I'd uh, like to talk about how we built our wood fire oven here in the Nilgiris in uh, South India. So this is the oven right here and uh, this, this video series will include the entire build from start to finish including the design constraints and uh, uh, the different things we considered and the problems we had as we as we went along. So when we decided we wanted a wood fire oven uh, we actually reached out to some people who would build it for us and it turned out that their pricing was really exorbitant you know in the order of uh, $1,500 um, you know something like that so about uh, a lakh or more in Indian rupees and so we just decided you know that just wasn't worth it so we uh, we decided we'd try and do it ourselves and uh, even though it did take us you know probably a month, month and a half plus from the time we started. Uh, it was well worth it because eventually uh, we ended up spending less than maybe, um, you know, 120, 130 dollars, so about 7,000, 7, 8,000 rupees for all the, the, the material and um, we just did it ourselves. So in this video I'd like to go through uh, the entire build for you uh, so that if you want to build an oven yourself, well, this is where you uh, need to start. Here are the basic calculations I did for the wood fire oven to, you know, figure out things like how many bricks I need and things like that. Uh, I apologize, you can't really see it clearly and uh, it's actually, if you look at it, it's pretty disorganized the way I've done it. But uh, that's just the way I am. I like to scribble in my uh, <laughs> notebooks and things like that, scribble out my ideas. So anyway, I'll just try and go through. So. Uh, I'll try and explain it to you the best I can. Okay, so the first thing we decided was, uh, is this is sort of like looking at the oven from the top, uh, just the first layer of the of the oven, uh, the bottommost layer. And the first thing we talked about was the width of this opening. So I actually asked my wife, you know, what's the size of the the you know the pan or the you know, cast iron frying pan or the or whatever the whatever it is you want to put in what's the biggest thing you want to put into the oven and so once we figured that out depending on you know the kind of utensils we had we determined this width and based on this width then all the other calculations come in okay so i'll post the link to the wikipedia page which will tell you the exact ratio for this to this and things like that uh, in order to achieve the correct airflow and the heat uh, heating considerations. So how it works is the dome height. So let's find a picture of the dome height here. This is the dome height. All right. The dome height should actually be three fourths of the dome width. Okay. So whatever the width of your dome is, the height needs to be three fourths of that. And there's a particular sequence. So if you have an internal diameter, you should have a particular um, value for the uh, the vault, the height of the vault, the door height, the door width, and the flue width. So the flue is where the exhaust goes out. So these are some basic, uh, you know, parameters that you should adhere to more or less uh, to ensure that the airflow inside your oven and things like that, uh, you know, are okay. All right. So these are some of the diagrams I made based on my particular uh, situation. All right, um, and then I realized that if I wanted to make a dome shape, you got to add somehow because I'm not a stone, I'm not a mason, so I've never done any masonry work earlier. Uh, I was kind of worried that the whole thing would implode on itself, you know, sort of collapse. So I decided to cut my bricks into wedge shapes, so that even if I didn't apply any kind of mortar between them, uh, wedge shaped brick, you know, if you build a surface of wedge shaped bricks they'll never fall in on each other. So I decided to cut my bricks and I have, a, I have a video of that which I'll include. All right, here's the platform. Um, and so we built a stone platform with a uh, concrete, uh, you know, stone uh, supports with a concrete uh, a sort of base on top of these dimensions. So 120 centimeters by 135. And that just about fits the, the profile of the oven which we decided over here. These are some, uh, so based on the height and width ratios, we calculated what should be the height of the oven, the, the radius of the oven and things like that. What should be the size of the opening, the width of the opening. Um, and all this is there on the wiki page. So there's a link to that down below how to do these things. I'm just sort of showing you what I did. All right, now here's the bricks I used. So 
we used refractory brick uh, because they can withstand this the high temperatures inside the oven much better than normal brick wood so you can just buy these from uh, you know people who sell uh, furnace equipment and things like that so these are the dimensions of the bricks that we bought i would have liked to buy wedge shaped bricks like this i understand they are available in some places but we could only get this kind of brick so i had to actually cut them into wedge shapes which i'll show you so this is the calculation i did for cutting the wood and i figured that each sort of brick uh, would need to be at an angle of 12.8 degrees in order to fit correctly into the into the circle that i was building into the into this circle like this so Uh, this is the basic shape that I would need to cut out. So what I actually did was I cut a plywood template of this uh, in order to ensure that, you know, everything is uniform. All the bricks are the same size. So I just cut a template uh, out of a piece of plywood and I used that as my guide while cutting. So here's the, here's the gazebo in which it's a hexagonal shaped gazebo. I can show you that actually. There you are. That's the gazebo over there. Okay. So the gazebo, this is the gazebo and we figured, you know, the dimensions of the gazebo, this is where we wanted the oven. And so you can see the platform, the square, and then the oven sort of uh, stenciled on top of that. Okay. Again, the brick cutting. And these are the, the, the calculations for that. This, this, this angle is actually based on the fact that there's an outer circumference diameter, which is the outside of the brick. And obviously there's an inside circle diameter. And so if you do the calculations for that, I ended up with a calculation of 12.8 degrees should be the, the angle between, you know, the angle of the wedge, which I'm using. Okay. So that's pretty simple to do. Here's the, cal you know, it's just simple mathematics. Um, if you have a certain circumference, you need a certain number of bricks to cover that. Uh, this is this is a half brick. So this, the base starting is here. This is a half brick, 11 centimeters. So if the brick is 11 centimeters, how many do you bricks do you need to complete a full circle? And uh, you know, sort of what angle does that subtend? So that's simple mathematics. All right, here's the base of the oven, what we planned. So the bricks, what we wanted to do was arrange them in a herringbone pattern like this. It's just a rough diagram. And uh, this is what normally people do in wood fire ovens. I guess it keeps the bricks without, uh, you know, prevents them from moving around and it also allows you to move the pizza in and out fairly easily, the pizza peel without actually, you know, um, too much resistance from bricks had you put them in a, in a sort of straight or a cross fashion. All right, so this is the herringbone pattern. Okay, now I need to figure out how many bricks we need. So basically that works out to how much square area you need, right? Okay, so how about, let's figure out the square area. And the square area consists of two things. So the first is you're basically building half a sphere, right? Okay, so you're building half a sphere like this. So you need to calculate the surface area of a sphere and then divide that by two. So that's over here. And you need to that you need to add the fact that you have two sort of domes at the door. One here and one a little inner, inner I'll show you that. Um, so not domes, but arches rather. So you need to add that to the to the calculation. So you've got the total square area of the of the dome plus the two arches that, at the entry of the dome. And then you've got to figure out the number of bricks you need to do the surface. So that's just pi r square. Um, and uh, so that's that gives you the number of uh, bricks you need to do the surface. And then you can work out. So if you have so much square area, all right, and now you know the surface area of each brick by this surface. See, this is the surface area that each brick will have. So in my case, it was 23 into 11 centimeters is the surface area of each brick. So you add up all the surface areas, total area you get, so I needed about 7.6 centimeters square. This is the brick area. So the number of bricks is uh, works out to about 166 bricks. And so I added a little extra to that, you know, to account for breakage and, you know, things like that uh, calculation or, you know, construction errors. So this works out about 186. So I figured I needed about 200 bricks in total. 
And actually, this worked out very accurately. I think we actually used about 190 bricks or something like that. So these are the basic calculations. And I highly recommend you sort of plan out your entire build using diagrams and actually working out things like this because it really does help in the final process. And if you're, if you're using bricks like this, if you have bricks that are already wedge-shaped, uh, well and good. But if you don't and you your masonry skills are not up, you know, uh, you haven't really done too many masonry projects, I highly recommend cutting the bricks. It's a long, time-consuming process, but it's well worth it in the end because it really does uh, make the build easier and it also uh, improves the structural strength and integrity of the entire uh, the dome. And uh, I know that now that I'm, since I'm using these kind of wedged uh, bricks there's no way that my dome can fall in on itself even though my masonry work is uh, pretty terrible so these are the calculations and uh, I hope uh, things are more or less clear on how the planning process goes the number of bricks the dimensions of the oven and things like that all that's in the wiki page so that's just in the link in the description you can have a look at that so let's move on to the cutting of the brick now Okay, so to start with the brick cutting. All right, so that's a refractory brick. It's a, it's a lot denser and heavier than the normal uh, clay uh, wire cut bricks that you find. Um, and I'm using a plywood template, like I mentioned earlier, uh, to, to mark out the exact shape, the wedge shapes that I need for the, um, for the bricks. And now, uh, this this um, all right. So over here, I'm using now a, a straight edge to transfer the to the markings to the other side, and the purpose of this is to you know make sure that the bricks are uniform and all the same size when we uh, when we put them together. All right. So now while cutting the brick, uh, you can see I'm spraying a little water there uh, near the cutting wheel. And that's to prevent uh, you know the dust from flying up all over the place. But uh, in uh, you know no matter what you do, you will get a lot of dust flying. So safety equipment, gloves, uh, mask, goggles, I highly recommend uh, you use those. Don't, don't attempt this without that because uh, if you are planning to cut brick like this, it takes a long time. This is probably the longest and most labor intensive part of the entire build of the wood fire oven. Now, if you are if you're able to find wedge shaped bricks in your location, uh, I highly recommend you do that because uh, this takes a long time. Uh, this took me at least a couple of weeks maybe two to three weeks cutting a few bricks every day uh, before I was able to have enough bricks to start the build actually. So if you can get wedge shaped bricks or you can, uh, uh, you know, you, you're confident of your masonry skills, just go ahead with the, the regular store bought uh, kind. Okay, so here I'm finishing up the bricks with the, um, uh, an angle grinder and just uh, smoothing out the edges. You see the amount of dust that's coming out anyway. Uh, so once this is done, uh, you end up with two wedge shaped bricks and uh, I have roughly about, uh, depending on how many you need, I had to cut about uh, a total of about 350, maybe 375 uh, half bricks. And uh, let's move on to the building. <laughs> 